Hello everyone. Today I will introduce a newly published paper from ICLR called Spatial Temporal Graph Scattering Transform. This paper mainly targets at processing spatial temporal data and exploit the feature from such data for downstream application. The proposed model utilizes kinds of signal processing techniques which with which I was not familiar before. But I find it very interesting to understand this model, and I think it will benefit our study in transportation domain. Okay, here we go. This review still consists of three parts. Let's begin with the introduction. And as we all know, data in specific structure can provide additional useful information for us. And nowadays, the spatial temporal data is ubiquitous and the relationship lay in the spatial and temporal domain presents many useful latent patterns. For example, the traffic state observation of the road network is spatial temporal data and the level of construction as certain road segment during certain time interval is not isolated but related to its downstream or upstream later or earlier. In addition, we can also see that the data, this data catalyzing a sequence of human poses. The action of a human also presents information on in both space and time dimension. And in this paper, the author points out that uh, all of this spatial temporal data have been well uh, utilized by the uh, graph graph new network and they have and they has achieved great empirical success. They they will suffer since their training requires lots of high quality uh, structured data and these models, the graph new network models, are basically a deep learning models and so they they are more like a black box which lack of theoretical interpretation on robustness. As a result, they propose this model called spatial temporal graphs gathering. Now let's see how their model work. First, I would like to go through some preliminary for better understanding their work. The spatial temporal data can be regarded as uh, can be represented as a matrix where the number of rows indicates the number of spatial locations of this data set and a current and and the number of current equals the overall time steps. Specifically, the author suggests that a spatial node, uh, uh, each row can be regarded as a spatial node catalyzed by a time series. This it can it can be regarded as one node, and a current is a temporal node with observations of different location as feature. Therefore, we have a separate spatial temporal design and it is achieved by processing the currents and rows of the spatial temporal data separately based on their respective graphs. For the spatial graph, they only consider the spatial correlation, which means the uh, fixed code, which means the uh, topology in transportation network and the skeleton in the in a human being and the temporal and the temporal graph catalyzes the temporal correlation which is uh, which is the uh, the the which is the uh, relationship between the between different time steps in addition this paper suggests the further spatial temporal joint graph, joint graph construction by introducing graph product it's, it's actually an operator between two two graphs and I summarize the process of graph product as each vertex in one graph copies the entire other graph's vertex then the adjacency between those vertices are created based on specific adjacency conditions we can see three examples mentioned in this paper, and let's check how this process works. The first is the Kronacher product of spatial graph and the temporal graph. And the Kronacher product of two matrices can be represented as this mathematical formula. And for the Kronacher product on two graphs, we can see this example. 
Let's see how this loose works in this and uh, in, in the Kronecker product. First, each vertex in one graph copies in ten other graphs vertices. You can, as you can see, each vertex in one graph copies or in, in the vertices in other graphs. Then we can have new new vertices here. A one, A, A here. Co it copies one and it copies two. So we have A one, A two. So we have the a graph. We have a new graph with the with this vertices with the vertices which is produced by the by the first by the first loop. Second, then the addresses between those vertices are created based on specific addressing conditions. And the addressing condi conditions for the Kronecker product is presented as here. That which is the only nodes that are addressing in former graphs that that will have that will be addressing addressed in the new graph. Therefore, in this way, we can formulate a joint joy graph based on the Kronecker product of the of the former two graphs. Another example is called Cartesian product. Uh, actually, it is it's very, it is it is similar. It is the process is similar, and other than it suggests another kind of adjacency loop in the new graph. That is, uh, which I coded in the YouTube in a YouTube video. It it, it, it just says that the proposed adjacent adjacent conditions is that given two vertices from two set of vertices from two graphs, if the this this vertices will be adjacent only if the only if the uh, the node then the vertices of one graph is is identical and the vertices in other graph are adjacent therefore we can have this new uh, new joint graph by imposing this loose on the on this on, on the on the new for new producing uh, vertices and the last is the strong product of the spatial graph and temporal graph. Actually, it's only a combination of adjacency back from the 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 Kronecker product and the Cartesian product. So he have he has more dense adjacency here. Then we implement graph filtering for for the mentioned graphs. The graph filtering is to extract and summarize useful feature of the graph based on some suggested filters. The first is separable spatial temporal graph filtering, where the relation in spatial and temporal domain is processed separately. Here, the x indicates the spatial temporal data, and the red part indicates the uh, filtering on spatial domain while the blue part indicates the filtering in temporal graph domain. And this filtering can also be done in a spatial domain where we first in transform graph signal, we first transform graph signal in spatial domain by using graph volume transform and then we filtering the signal by, by using by using parameterized rate on different frequencies and then we transfer back transform the signal back to the graph domain by use by use, by use the inverse volume graph graph volume transform and if we, if we conduct the graph uh, uh, conduct the graph filtering on joint spatial time graph we can uh, similarly have this formula and also suggest that Though the representation power of separable graph filter is not necessarily much stronger than the joint ones, the separable design enjoys the flexibility, computation efficiency, and the straightforward interpretation, and they will validate this statement in later experimental studies. Okay, let's move. Okay, before introducing the proposed method, we should we should move on to another signal process, processing technique called wavelet transform. It is an alternative solution to Fourier transform to handle unstable series. The unstable the, what unstable series mean is that the frequencies of this of the series varies over time. So it's so it will be unstable in time dimension. 
and we will do the complete convolution to extract useful features based on wavelet transform. And the wavelet here is actually is this is is a, 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 this function. The wavelet suggests a more flexible base to filter the signal via the as you can see the trans tra translation the tau is the translation it adjusts these basics along the time dimension so you can uh, process the this time signal at different time dimension with different uh, with different basics and here is the scale the scale actually is the is the inverse of the frequency the higher scale indicates the lower frequency so by in, by using different scales in this function you can as pay different you can pay attention to different frequencies in this way in, in this way uh, the 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 wavelet transform can handle the time series signal with different frequencies and based on the wavelet recent studies on signal processing suggest a more comprehensive framework called wavelet scattering it looks complicated but actually it, it can be regarded as a convolutional neural network which, which does not need to train. Specifically for an input signal here, we can first do convolution. We, we, we can do f convolution using uh, dip, uh, wave, wave rate filtering with different uh, frequencies. And this is the one of the filtering and this is the wave rate with different with with frequency with different scale the scale the scale actually indicates the frequency and um, actually you first do the convolution which is like what the uh, CNN does and after the convolution we do the nonlinearity which is also uh, can be can be seen in the in the in CNN and and the nonlinearity in the very scattering is the complex model models which is this formula because the signal is, because the signal after the uh, convolution can be can be uh, pre presented as a, a real part and a complex and a com imaginary part so they do this nonlinearity function here and in the and since it, and in this way they can preserve the energy of the signal Finally, the pooling in CNN is introduced here by doing convolutional with row pass filtering. So actually, this procedure is what is, is what a CNN does, but it, it does not need to train because the parameters here is all mathemat mathematically designed. Okay, given the in, in, uh, pre preliminary introduction, we can have a look on the proposed method. The author suggests the, the author first suggests a spatial temporal graph variables. Similar to the variable mentioned before, the filter the filter graph the filter they filter graph signal with different time scale. Uh, with different time scale, which means they consider the different frequencies of the graph signal. And how they do it, and how and how to uh, use uh, to filter the graph signal with different time scale is by introducing different signal here and they in the appendix they have mentioned three uh, available uh, kernels for the wavelet trans for the wavelet transform on graph signal then they take a step further by proposing spatial temporal graph scattering you, and they use a separate graph as example. This framework consists of three parts, just like the graph, just like the wavelet scattering mentioned before. First is the spatial temporal graph wavelets. The original graph signal is filtered by kernels in spatial and temporal graph iteratively. First, they first uh, filtering by the spatial wavelet and then the temporal wavelet. And each wave, each layer has different uh, times. It has has different scale, which means which means they consider different frequencies. And following each filtering is the nonlinearity activation. Finally, the filtering feature is summarized by an up pooling operator to opt to obtain row dimension vector. 
and also points out that compared to the spatial temporal graph convolution neural network, the proposed model uh, leverages multiple spatial temporal graph filters, just like here, so they can cover multiple frequency banks. Furthermore, the author mathematically presents stability analytics by proving there is an upper bound for the reward signal from the perturbation. And you can check the detailed projects, uh, the, pro the proven projects in appendix. I just highlight the consideration for the business problem here. The first is the, they consider the stability to perturbation of spatial temporal graph signals. What they care is the difference of output with or without additional noise on input data. And, I th and one of the and one of the important thing is that they normalize that the the, the, uh, the error is normalized by the square root of dimension of the final feature map. And when I consider the Robesnik study before, I have not uh, considered such normalization. I think they will be helpful for further study. And the second is the stability to perturbation of spatial temporal graph structures. And they consider only consider the spatial graph here. And and uh, and what they consider is the difference of output with or without perturbation on spatial structure. And also they the this this error signal is normalized by the square root of dimensional of the final feature map. And then let's see how their model is applied in its in experiments. Actually, they mainly focus on activity recognition, and two sets of real world benchmark data is used. The first is the MSI Action 3D dataset. In this dataset, they characterize the human's behavior with the by their actions. For example, this is the action, and the, there is this is a label. And also, we, ha we also have a NTU RGBD data which has a, a detailed information of some body joints here. And they compare their models with multiple baselines and the result validates that and, uh, and they are on, oh, sorry, and they uh, and for the model settings, they they suggest that the spatial graph structure is the skeleton, and the temporal graph structure is is just connecting consec consecutive timestamps. And for the various kernel, they use geometric scattering variables. And the nonlinearity in this in this model is the absolute value function. They they suggest that this function can preserve the energy of the signal. And actually, this model is non-trainable, it's just, just like act like a, a feature extra, extraction procedure. So for the downstream application, they introduce a trainable classifier, the random forest with 300 decision tree. And they compare their models with multiple baselines, and the result validates that the proposed model is more powerful when the data is limited. Since this model is a non-trainable framework and the future coefficients in this model are mathematically designed. Specifically, they, three, uh, they present three major findings. First, the proposed model works well in small-scale data regime because they do not need much training data compared to the deep learning method. And also, the separable design is better than joint design, and this fact, uh, this fact in indicates that the simple is better. So, in most cases, we do not bother com constructing complex graph signal by introducing different interactions. We just what we just what we need to care is just the simple graph structure for the data. And maybe that the relationship in such data structure is enough and will be will, will perform better compared to the uh, complex structure of the data which is introduced by some uh, tricky man manuals. And, uh, and the third finding is that the linearity is beneficial. So this is their main findings here. Thank you. Bye bye.